Two of the most common wireless technologies that exist today are Wi-Fi, also known as 802.11, and Zigbee, also referred to as 802.15.4. Choosing which wireless technology is best for a particular application can be decided by examining three main characteristics, power, bit rate, and range. The first characteristic to consider when choosing which wireless technology is best for your application is power. When talking about 802.11 devices such as cell phones or laptops, the battery lifetime is typically one to two days. 802.15.4 wireless technology, which is commonly used in smart grids and wireless measurement systems, can have a battery lifetime as high as three to five years. The next characteristic to consider is max bit rate. 802.11's max bit rate is 54 megabits per second. That is the highest throughput you can achieve with Wi-Fi. Zigbee only allows 250 kilobits per second. That's a big difference in the bandwidth between the two. The third characteristic to consider is range. Typically with line of sight, Wi-Fi can be accessed up to 100 meters, while Zigbee can reach 1,000 meters. You should also know about network topologies when considering your application's range. With 802.11, you have what is known as an access point and clients. If you have an Ethernet network, you can use several access points to extend your range. You can then use wireless to connect to your client, which are what devices such as laptops or smartphones do. To increase your range, you can install more access points on the Ethernet. By contrast, looking at 802.15.4, you still use Ethernet, but instead of access points, you use a gateway. This gateway provides connectivity from distributed nodes back to the Ethernet backbone. The nodes have a wireless antenna, and they communicate wirelessly using Zigbee back to the initial gateway. Unlike Wi-Fi, if you want to extend your distance, you can add more nodes without having to extend your gateway. This is known as mesh routing. The maximum range can be 1,000 meters. You can have additional nodes connected to the network, which can communicate wirelessly as well, but rather than the device serve as a node, it becomes a router. What it's doing is routing info from the end node back to the gateway. This also allows redundancy by providing a second node available if the first one loses connectivity. So if one were offline, data could be provided back to the gateway. As you can see, there are a lot of characteristics to consider when choosing a wireless technology for you. For more information about wireless sensor networks, visit ni.com slash WSN.